Welcome. News is a highly prevalent one and it's being part and parcel of life. Remember that when we take a decision for uh, election or when we take a decision to buy a product, when uh, we decided to get involved in a nearby community life, we take a stand. We take a stand on particular issue, on particular matter, particular uh, purchase, whatever level, we have to take a stand. Stand means a decision. We are making a decision. Decision to select, decision to reject, decision to participate, decision to not to participate. For all these decisions based, are based on certain information, certain facts. Means we are trying to collect as much information as possible on those decisions in order to take a more informed decisions. For example, to select a candidate or to buy a product like a refrigerator, we used to analyze many uh, information sources. Particularly for the current uh, events, environment, uh, developments and everything, other political and other issues, we rely heavily on news institutions. Whatever the information we are able to connect through various news outlets like a newspaper, radio, television, or mobile or online, we are relying on those selectively. We are collecting information. We will gather more information, try to understand that information and we will take a decision. Remember that all these informations are generated by some third party, some other news editor, some journalist, some reporter, uh, academicians, a scholar or any newsmaker. So we are trying to understand others' information from others' point of view for our decisions. Here is our critical role is information. Information we are collecting. We have to filter it as per our requirement understand that in filtered information for our informed decision. This is the very complicated process and uh, complicated in the sense it happens in our mind automatically but if we have to be trained in order to take those steps in order to for a kind of informed decisions. This complex decision making process for an informed decision is called news literacy. News literacy in the sense we are trying to understand the news operation. Literacy in the sense the basically to understand the language. If you take one particular word literacy but if you combine with the news literacy it's, it's a sub domain of a broad umbrella called media literacy. Media literacy is a term used for understanding media news literacy is specifically for understanding news operations. How we are consuming, how to consume those information, how to those information for our benefits. This is the, the crux of news literacy. Why do we need to know more about news literacy? There are certain facts. For example, uh, with the advent of social media and digital media, there are two disturbing developments are happening because of rampant usage of individuals and many more things the fake news and misinformation this is rampant what's the root cause of misinformation what's the root of root cause of fake information we can't conclude that because of social media because of digital media these two are unexpected uh, result of those two developments no we can't relate these two Fake information and misinformation is not new to humanity. That uh, both of them are existing in our human civilization for a very long time. But got aggravated, it got more relevance, got more meaningful platform to propagate to a larger number of people due to the latest digital developments. Reason is, before digital era, the major public information systems are being controlled by professionals like uh, newspapers or uh, television or uh, uh, media outlets owned by government and other people. So they have their own system of filtering information, gatekeeping. They have a process called gatekeeping. Gatekeeping, you know the meaning of gatekeeping. 
they allow a certain information to pass on to the society through their platform and they filter many information unwanted unrelated and and uh, not required for society for whatever reasons they filter the information so they gatekeep that so informations are passed based on certain criteria which they think the newsroom people think that required relevant or uh, re uh, justified for the society all others are rejected so they performed very clear stand on gatekeeping standard rules and standard operating procedures ethical standards guidelines to filter reject the stories to act the stories so yeah a kind of mechanism they always practice so unwanted information or distorted information uh, doesn't reach the society in a very easy manner if they deliberately they want to do they can do it that's a different matter but otherwise normally uh, they may not allow the uh, wrong information fake information misinformation to pass through their platform there are a lot of consequences for this a newspaper does this very frequently because they lose the uh, credibility credibility is very crucial because uh, uh, then only the loyalty comes so you and me can tend to subscribe that newspaper can a long term magazine or television channels whatever thing so once they lose the credibility they lose the audience they can't afford it because their major revenue source based on the size of the audience more the size more number of audience they get more profit so they are not in a position to lose the audience size uh, for the retain the audience size they have to maintain certain minimum credibility part if they always uh, you distort the information the people might move to some other platform so that they can't do that so that the mainstream media with a gatekeeping process always they use to check the uh, the uh, the main information passing through their platform this is what the earlier uh, era what happens in a digital media platform in the digital media platform gatekeeping concept got changed change the sense uh, individuals with uh, uh, social media account can post information with the pictures with the video with other you know, other related media elements depends upon the 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 nature of the information and the consequences it intended to create certain information certain posts certain uh, reels might become viral it might reach the millions of people and uh, it might create a intended uh, uh, impact so the information delivered by individuals are decided by that particular individual there is no gatekeeping because a personal choice personal interest and personal motive all of them behind the posting the information in the public platform through social media and being propagated to across the globe now the social media is controlled by institutions not institutions individuals the individuals decides the what kind of information they have to they may not to get keep the information properly or deliberately they might do that so more individuals are playing less institutions role in the gatekeeping process that leads to the fake news and misinformation this is a root cause how do we control it there is no scope of controlling it there are uh, uh, algorithm and technological interventions the companies are making in order to control the uh, fake news and misinformation but definitely many information pass through that part on other hand other solution is the receiver develops certain kind of immunity like uh, we can't uh, kill the virus but we will develop the immunity through vaccine so this is the same uh, lifestyle philosophy can applicable to news platform fake news and misinformation bit uh, uh, it's not that easy to eradicate rather the simplest solution is the audience the news users can develop a kind of uh, understanding to how to differentiate between a right information and fake information that is called news literacy and uh, that is the uh, that is not only a reason for that even in the professional news platform many of the uh, companies news companies since it's a pro profit oriented since it's a business and uh, they are take a stand they take a pro or anti stand towards the ideology government corporates society and institutions 
they, they are taking a stand, uh, which, is not, which is against the objective reporting part. And another point is, deliberately they are uh, giving a biased information for whatever reasons. Could be the business interest, could be the political interest, or could be uh, the ownership interest. There are many ways in which the corruption is also happening in the news operation. One, individuals through social media, they are propagating certain kinds of information. Other one, uh, media, typical media institutions, they are corrupt in terms of biasness, sensational and other types of uh, journalistic practices. I am not putting full picture in this manner. There is a lot of scope of practicing fake misinformation, biasness and sens sensational in the news industry. Not everybody belongs to this bracket, but large number of people belongs to this category. But as a common person, we need to uh, differentiate, we need to know how to differentiate between the typical objective reporting and biased reporting, fake news and misinformation. So this is uh, the best way of is we have to be more little more vigilance, uh, vigilante and uh, uh, in terms of identifying unreliable news sources, verifying information, authenticating information, fact checking the information. This is the manner in which the news can be consumed in a rightful manner because more information leads to your informed decisions. Remember that news literacy definitely helps you to acquire actual information, process the actual information and develop your own understanding related to your uh, decision making process. But here the news literacy, I told you that this is a subdomain of media literacy. Now let us understand what is the role of media literacy in the news consumption part. And uh, it helps the consumers, the media literacy helps the consumers to understand news from biasness. They, it helps them to identify what is actually biasness, taking a stand. How do we do that? So when the story is being presented and presented in that manner, it's not neutral, it's taking a stand, it's supporting some individual supporting some institution, it's supporting some political party which is against the, the, the actual truth, then you can easily understand that there is something wrong in the presentation part. This will help that the media literacy helps. Media literacy basically actually helps you to understand how to access the right information. Right information, which other institutions provide objective reporting, which other institutions provide the sensational reporting. It helps you to identify the two segments so you can avoid a sensational, you can go for objective part. One is accessing right information. Once information is being accessed in a rightful manner, you will be able to understand the information in a critical context, critical understanding. Critical understanding in the sense, who, who is behind this uh, news, which organization behind this uh, news operation, and what the business interest in other areas, do they have any affiliation in the corporate or political part, what timing they are projecting this particular story. So if you ask multiple questions critically, you can understand the actual motive of a particular story. Is it just for information? Is it just for elaborating your understanding? Or is something else? So this is uh, the, the steps the media literacy helps us to become a critical person of understanding news. And uh, uh, it uh, uh, helps you to question the, the informer, the source. Uh, if the story, if you can understand easily, if it's a pro-government, pro-corporate, pro-social institutions, if anything pro, remember that. And that story always go to the any news source maybe a uh, authority, maybe a uh, corporate uh, owner, higher authorities or uh, higher institution, institution person. Those people, if you link it with the story and uh, those source, can, you can connect with them. Both of them, both of them likes a particular stand, pro-government, pro-corporate, pro-social institution like that. So the source identification for this kind of biasness in information is very deliberate, very consciously they identify for the source in order to strengthen the argument of pro-government, pro-corporate, pro-social institutions. So this is, uh, you can question easily. If you question, 
this is not required for this story, then you can understand that is it objective reporting or biased reporting, right? And not only that, the media literacy helps you to actively engage with the news content. In the newspaper or in the television channels, our engagement is very limited. But whereas in the digital platform, uh, social media or in their portal, there's a lot of scope for the common person to interact with a newsmaker, like a journalist or newspaper editor, everything. They can interact, they can discuss, they can comment, or they like it, they share. Many things can be done. Each one, it, each effort makes a difference. Meaning, if somebody likes a story in an enormous manner, there's something uh, relevant for the society. That it, it signifies something else. And uh, this is possible if we are involved more, we can recommend more, at least it, it, it enhances the credibility of the story. So this is the in active engagement. All this, like uh, uh, critically analyzing a story from biasness and uh, uh, critical thinking about uh, uh, news, decoding the news, questioning the source, active engagement, these are the criteria of media literacy applying for a uh, news context in order to contextualize the news development process. If you specifically understand the news literacy, which is subdomain of media literacy, and uh, the actual definition of news literacy is critically understanding the news being presented by various uh, media outlets. Critical understanding of information presented by various news outlets. That's the simplest definition of news literacy. And uh, news literacy uh, by uh, developing our critical understanding of uh, questioning the news, news sources, news timing and ownership pattern of the story and who behind the story, if you start asking more questions, we can be able to differentiate between reliable and unreliable sources reliable and unreliable news reporting, reliable and unreliable information presented by news part. And news literacy helps us, helps the common person to recognize the perspective through which the particular story is being written. And in some other uh, similar video, we discussed about the different developmental news development process. One of the criteria we mentioned that news is being constructed. Informations are collected by uh, journalists from various sources. They collate as per their own understanding and they create a news package, be, be it a magazine or newspaper or television channel or portal. So everywhere, based on the individual institution, news, newsroom policy, news is being constructed. They might take a certain stand. Definitely they'll take a stand. And if they have the biggest corporate uh, sponsors, they may not be able to go against them. Whatever the issues of that corporate company with the government or with the society, they may not criticize the corporate directly. They try to avoid particular primarily, if not possible, they'll take a very st soft stand on those violations. So this is the, uh, the perspective of uh, newsroom operations. You can understand through the news literacy. Then biasness. Biasness is taking a stand, deliberate stand towards certain uh, issues. And uh, news literacy helps us to uh, uh, having a very informed position, informed person. And every major decision related to your personal or professional life, you will take a decision based on the available data with you based on your understanding of the, the situation. On that basis, you will take informed decision. That is very crucial and particularly for the democracy, this is very much crucial and every decision, uh, whatever the individual is taking, has become a collective interest of the nation and uh, collective, nation, collective interest of the society. And not only that, the news literacy helps the common people to engage with the uh, local community, society issues and anything that you can understand easily in the social media platform there are a lot of interest groups works in favor of certain things climate change preserving uh, rainwater or uh, pollute uh, fighting against pollution or uh, fighting against corruption 
fighting Arabs against the harassment, Me Too movement, you will find plenty of uh, interest group works in the social media platform. If you are very interested, if you are a news literate person, you get in, engaged with the community because the more participation of individuals helps the community's uh, living standards improves because of checks and balance. And news literacy and media literacy are considered to be a watchdog of watchdogs. And uh, in another video we discussed about what is a watchdog. Watchdog is a, uh, the function performed by mainstream media by scrutinizing the public performance of institutions. The media is a fourth pillar. They are supposed to protect the democratic values by criticizing the functioning of public institutions. We have some issues with the media. That's why we are saying media literate uh, helps uh, us to control the media, control the sense how we are consuming the media that can be controlled through the media literacy. If we are more literate means we are watching the watchdog, the watchdog of watchdog. That's what the simplest uh, uh, under the definition of news literacy. That helps us to engage with the community because since we are directly in, engaged with the media, uh, particularly with the digital media, we can be a voice to voiceless. We can uh, raise a voice against uh, certain atrocities. We can help the community to protect something. We can engage the common dialogue in order to resolve some issues. Many such opportunities exist to use the media in an appropriate manner, in a responsible manner. And uh, there are certain strategies that through which news literacy, media literacy can be followed. One, whenever we check the news item uh, through media, uh, through online or through digital, the information can be cross-checked through various fact-checking tools. There are many various uh, checking tools are provided by third parties, Institu public institutions, even government public uh, fact-checking uh, portals and uh, everything available, we can cross-check the information before accepting tho those presented to us. Or through websites, public websites, websites uh, uh, we can check the information. And uh, the media literacy promotes uh, people to uh, critically understand the context. Context in which the story is created context in which the story is being presented. The context, the timing and the person and institution behind the news, if you identify those people, you can understand the perspective, biasness, sensational, objective, every dimension of the story can be understood very clearly. And uh, best thing is the, the stories, majority of the stories goes with the sources. I told you that Journalist's role is to collect information. They have to collect information from the multiple sources and it's their duty to disclose the source. This is a mandatory rule of uh, any journalistic practices. It's, otherwise, it, it's become their own uh, opinion. That will become editorial, that will become a column if they write their own opinion. So the normal story, the journalist supposed to give the source of their information comes from that. If you critically understand the source, is it independent? Is it uh, planted? It's uh, approached deliberately? Uh, what category, if you classify the so sources, you can understand the news in a very meaningful manner. If the source is independent, source is credible, the story must be credible. If it's not independent, if it's not credible, then you can question the story. So this is one of the strategy for that. And always be, always check the story, don't accept anything in the face value, the story needs to be uh, double checked, the way the journalists are doing double checking, stories needs to be understood in a very systematic manner, it has to be, uh, you have to think twice, be skeptical about the story, particularly the important story, the editorial decisions and important information is being discussed over, over and again that time the common uh, reader needs to be a little more skeptical about the news presentation of particular issue. And uh, this kind of uh, media literacy, individual initiative somebody can develop on their own, but 
if you globally if you look at the global experiments of uh, promoting news literacy or media literacy at the whole and uh, you can understand that the media literacy is being imbibed uh, the youngsters particularly the school children are exposed to various dimension of media operation media ownership media system and through teaching through school curriculum media literacy can be introduced if in the young stage in the young youngsters are introduced to the critical understanding of media critical understanding of news that helps them to develop uh, uh, the critical understanding not necessarily the media it can be in every aspect of the life it helps them to to streamline their thinking streamlining the handling the information streamlining the handling the the media components so the uh, important takeaway from this program as well as in the previous uh, episode of this um, news literacy news uh, development is highly connected with the media literacy understanding news through media literacy helps us to contextualize the news consumption and our knowledge is fine tuned as per the objective manner and uh, it, media literacy is very crucial in uh, today's media landscape because media is a business oriented profit oriented it operates uh, in a different manner in order to attract our attention so we have to be critical about that and informed audience very crucial in a contemporary scenario participation is very much needed in a democracy informed decision by the audience in the public life it improves the quality of democratic life and uh, there is a lot of difference between news consumption and news participation we can't blindly accept whatever whatever is being presented we have to participate in terms of identifying the right information critically reading the st story and start engaging with uh, the source these are the primary pillars of news literacy that helps the common people to handle the media particularly news media thank you